Climate change is everyone's problem. But who should do something about it? Individuals changing their lifestyles or governments leading the way? It's not one or the other. We need both. Lifestyle change and system change are two sides of the same coin. While everyone can do something about climate change, some people can do a lot more. The world's richest 1% have carbon footprints over 100 times that of someone in the poorest 50%. Wealthier individuals can have the largest effect on driving down emissions by reducing air travel, choosing low carbon diets, reducing food waste, and shifting patterns of energy use at home. Governments can also enable change through effective policymaking, developing better rail infrastructure, providing cycle to work schemes, supporting the take-up of electric vehicles and eco-funding for housing. System change makes lifestyle change possible. Lifestyle change is also about volunteering, donating, investing, marching, voting and talking about climate change with those around us. Together, we have power as citizens and consumers and as friends and family members to create system change. Being serious about limiting warming to 1.5 degrees means throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at it. Nothing works without fossil fuels staying in the ground, but changing how we live is also crucial. Help us change the way people think about lifestyle change. Share this video and find out more here. yourself and let people know sure sure thanks so much and and hi everyone this is a, oh, it's a very sunny day down here um i'm in down in down in the south of england um and just to introduce myself first of all i work on climate change um have for a long tra tragically long time worked on climate change um for a number of different organizations i uh, worked for U the un for a while and then advised governments um, and NGOs. And at the moment, I've been working on ways in which we can get better citizen engagement on climate change. So I'm really pleased to see that it's really important that we hear, hear from everybody um, on how, how we're gonna address this collective challenge of climate change. So thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, yeah, I'm aware you're at the end of probably quite a lot of information you've been uh, absorbing. Um, I'm not going to talk for too long. Yeah, 10 minutes at the most. Um, and can you see my screen? Can you see my slides all right? Can you, are you seeing those? Yes, we can. Yes. We can see on, on slide view, but that's, yeah, that's it. That's, that's slide view. Okay, there we go. Um, so, yes, how change happens. It's this big question. <laughs> the number of ways, of course, there's never one thing that creates change. And you no doubt will have heard about quite what a huge change is needed to happen if we're really gonna meet the climate crisis. It really re requires change on a really fundamental level uh, across all areas of our life um, and at a really quite a rapid, at a rapid scale. And so of course that requires everybody playing their role in change. But just sort of stepping back and looking, looking through history at how, how have humans faced similar really huge change we've gone through huge changes we've gone through industrial revolution changes we've also gone through big social changes right if you think now what's um, normal and acceptable uh, only 50 years ago sometimes 20 years ago were really were really not acceptable and so change can happen actually very fast and it can feel very slow it can feel like pushing a boulder up a hill but actually sometimes change it takes a long time and then you get a critical mass and change can happen very fast. And so scientists um, who who have of social change. So I'll give you give you an example here. This is from the States. Um, this is the percentage of people who thought it was okay for their wife to earn money. Okay. <laughs> so in nineteen thirty in the nineteen thirties, only twenty just over twenty percent of this is men, sorry. This is asking men in the States. Only just over 20% of American men thought it was okay for their wife to earn money. <laughs> um, and then you can see that gradually, that gradually was increasing each year. And then in the 70s, that's increased. The change shifted really fast. 
and they're now 80 percent i mean i'd say it should be 100 percent but it, but it's not sadly but you know 80 percent vast majority now say of course it's okay and that's you know that status this is a bit out of date the status now shows it stays the same and you can see the same pattern across attitudes to from anything from smoking in public to wearing seat belts to attitudes towards gay marriage um you know change can happen slow it can feel very slow and you have people campaigning and pushing for and then you get a critical mass and then it's really fast and I think that's maybe a helpful way to think about climate change it can feel very overwhelming it can feel huge it's on a long time scale we need to see change you hear about uh, 2050 you hear about decades and actually there is evidence to show some changes starting to happen it's not it's not fast enough but that is how change happens and it's not um, and it requires everybody playing their role. Obviously, it's not um, it's not down to one. It's never down to one one, one responsible for change. Um, so obviously, I, I heard you're going to hear next week. I think a bit more about the role of of government, and particularly regional government and city and county government. So I'm not going to go into huge detail, but just to say, there are obvious ways in which obviously government as the as the elected bodies who are responsible for our collective well-being and meeting our needs our human rights and our public services have do have ultimate responsibility on climate change it's not just down to individuals of course there's a collective government responsibility the national government is not taking adequate uh, response on climate change yet they're doing a lot and they are taking it seriously at face value but the policies are not matching up to that and that's the same globally um, there's no one government who has is taking adequate action at the moment. So, of course, government has a responsibility and that applies to local government and regional and city government. Um, and then there's the obvious ways in which they can do that. Planning rules, policy. So deciding that all new houses should be built to a high standard. That's a, but obvious uh, change that a government can make that has huge implications. And then the other obvious ways perhaps are, you know, budget decisions, what they spend, decide to spend their budget on and how, how they prioritise. So deciding to prioritise budget on cycle lanes and buses, um, perhaps over road building. You know, these are all choices and they're all trade-offs. Participation, so ensuring that people and people living in the area have a chance to have an input and say in that, like the citizen jury you're doing today is obviously another really important way in which government can play a role but another way is is simply convening so we all know that councils are under huge pressure their budget's been cut a lot they're under huge pressure dealing with coronavirus and now recovery after coronavirus but convening power is really not to be underestimated that's simply bringing people together so bringing different stakeholders together bringing businesses together with local bodies and local people to um, develop plans can be really powerful as well because it's a way of identifying common common opportunities and actually the sort of the narrative um impact this bit nebulous but just as important so a council declaring a climate emergency in itself doesn't do anything that right? in itself doesn't reduce any carbon emissions but it does make an important statement and it does send a signal and it communicates to people and businesses and organizations within that area that they care, that they've understood the seriousness and the science, science, and they're going to try and do something about it. So that narrative really matters, the language and the way in which government at all levels talk about climate difference. So those are just some of the ways in which government has an important role to play. Lucy, um, there's just over, just over three minutes left. Thank you. But then obviously there are other ways in which um, change happens. So as individuals, it can feel very easy, I think, to feel like, what can I do as an individual when the issue is so huge? But obviously the decisions you make as consumer matter. Individually, they might be insignificant, but they send a signal of where the demand is, where the interest is, where the consumer support is. And that includes decisions you have fund, which banks you, 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 you bank with. As citizens, obviously, who you vote for what you ask your elected representatives about, how much you talk to them about climate change. And then as community members, 
So there are lots of examples of where communities are coming together to take collective action, not just as individuals and not just lobbying their MPs and their councils to do something, but taking on responsibility themselves. And there are stories all across the country of people coming together to try and prevent and protect against flood risks, one of the impacts of climate change. Of taking ownership of land as an example in Scotland, where a community bought a land from a wealthy landowner and they own it as a collective and they're going to generate renewable energy, create jobs in the local area. Um, so there are lots of examples of collective ownership, which is also a type of action and also a type of um, economic uh, power that communities can have. So I'll leave it there, but just to end on those kind of three ways, perhaps, in which obviously there are other ways in which change happens, but maybe the three kind of primary ways are the role of government at all levels, local, regional, national, but not just as voters, but also as consumers and as community members. And then the role of communities coming together, whether that's a local business, a local enterprise, or a voluntary activity. And those are all the different ways in concert together that change can start to happen quite quickly. And it can feel quite slow, but as an aggregate, when all those things are happening together, they feed into each other, they create positive feedback loop. And the more that an elected representative sees action happen, the more they hear about people talking about climate change, raising it, the more incentive they have to do something about it. So I think I'll end it there because I don't want to I don't want to go over my time slot. But those are the those are the key ways, and I'm happy to stay on for questions. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you.